1963, researchers from Bethesda performed an experiment on whether behavior at an event could be taught through simple reinforcement and conditioning with no other input or stimuli. Results were astonishing and unexpected. Not only could a subject be taught to behave in a particular way, but by rewarding random acts, the subjects developed a belief system that was nearly impossible to destroy. All that it took was for the subject to execute an action and receive a random reward, and they forever connected one with the other. No amount of science can undermine faith, and the perception of reality is stronger than reality itself. Join us today as we explore the mysteries of Fasnacht, Mask Rarity, and Loot Drops on The F-Files. We are a week into Fasnacht, and honestly, it feels like the loot drops suck. As with all things, the internet is full of theories about why this is and how to beat it. So in this video, we're going to go over some of those ideas and we'll tell you how we feel. At the end of the video, we've got some science for you based on the number of runs that I've done while AFKing and that Noodle has done while just playing the game like a normal person. Theory number one, the more people present at the event, the lower your chances of getting good loot. What do you think? Bullshit. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. No, it's bullshit. You have a statistical probability of getting any particular mask from the three groups, and the server doesn't care how many people are there. It's not like there's a pool of masks that are assigned to the group and then you get one of those. It's scored individually for each player, whether you're the only player at the event or one of 24. Theory number two. The more AFKers at the event, the crappier the loot. Bullshit. <laughs> bullshit it for this, it's bullshit. It's, it's for the exact same it. reason. Exact same reasons. Yeah, there's not a pool that's divided amongst the players that are there, and it doesn't matter whether they're AFKing or not. You run the event, you have X percentage of probability of getting any particular mask. Now, what, what you might see is that you have a 5% chance of getting a rare mask, but there are 15 rare masks, so you actually have like a 0.33% chance of getting any particular mask from the rare group. 0.33%. Some people are under the impression that if you are running the event, you appear to the server somehow different than if you are AFKing. Like if you are AFKing, you're somehow taking up more space on the server or something. It doesn't work like that. A lot of people don't know how these types of systems work, and I can't speak to exactly how Bethesda has their system programmed, but they don't have, there's no benefit for them to do something for an individual object within the server. And that's all you are. You're, as a player, you're just another object. You have, you know, different attributes from like a, an, an attacker or a Fosnock bot or something like that, but you're an object. And the level of effort required to code in special behavior for you as an object, and then to have that special behavior be conditional on an event that happens two weeks out of the year, they're not gonna pay somebody to do it. There's no benefit for them to do it. They don't get any more money for doing it. So therefore they're not gonna do it. So you, I mean, you're like a man of science and internet wizardry. You will probably know all about theory number three, which states the presence of AFKers makes the server run slow. True or false? False. Why? False, false, for the, for the same reasons that I just described. The server, we've all seen that the servers run more slowly when people are on the server, uh, particularly when there is a lot going on. Fastnacht as an event is very localized, and if you have 10, 12, 24, any number of people there doing something, every explosion has to be rendered across all of those different players' consoles. Every object that moves within the space has to move across all of those people's consoles. And having all of that localized with a lot of things blowing up and, and enemies and all of that stuff does increase the load on the server, but it increases the load uniformly whether people are actively participating or AFKing. Even if somebody's AFKing, the explosion might not show up on their screen, but the presence of the explosion does. Any you know residual damage, any light source or anything like that does show up on their screen, so the server still has to calculate it the exact same way. There's nothing about being AFK that increases the load on the server in any way. You might argue that if nobody was AFKing, like let's say that you go to the event and there are 12 people playing 
and 12 people AFK. The server will run more slowly than if there were 12 people playing and zero people AFK. That is a true statement. However, it will not run more slowly than if there were 24 people playing instead of 12 of them AFK. It has everything to do with the number of people that are on the server and the number of events that are happening, not event like Fosnock, but event like explosions and bullets and enemies, the number of things that are happening within a localized area. That's what increases the server load. Okay, so even if AFKing wasn't technically possible, the servers would run just as slow if the maximum number of players show up to Fosnock. Absolutely. So do you think Bethesda is handling this well, it seems like the servers are always a little shaky during events. <laughs> <laughs> Bethesda's not going to do anything that doesn't affect their bottom line. Okay. So that works in the other direction as well. Does Bethesda make more money if they invest in more infrastructure or if they pay somebody to fix the code that causes the servers to occasionally bog down when there's a lot of people on it? The answer is no. Okay. Therefore, they're not going to do it. They're not going to fix anything until it has a monetary value attached to it that benefits them. Okay, so they know but don't care. <laughs> Basically, yeah. They, well, they know. They, they probably <laughs> care. I'm sure that there are developers inside of Bethesda who want nothing more than to make the game perfect. Developers like building good stuff. It probably hurts the emotions of a number of people that the game has bugs. All right. Conspiracy theory number four. If you complete Fasnacht while it's in a blast zone, you get some glowing loot. You did that earlier today. What happened? I did. I ran my Fasnacht event during a nuke event. Thank yeah. you very much, whoever did that. And no, I just got a regular mask. Yeah. So although your enemies will have you know, hardened mass, glowing mass, and high radiation fluids, and the various flowers that are around Helvetia will turn into irradiated flora, you do not get a glowing mask just because somebody nuked the event. All you get is the joy of running the event in a hazmat suit with no armor value or Chinese stealth armor, which at least has some armor value. So it probably has happened to people, but my guess would be it was pure coincidence. Yes. Here's another one for you, our final theory. Slow walking the event will result in better loot. That is straight up pigeon logic. <laughs> straight up pigeon logic. I mean, maybe if you stand on one foot or maybe if you run the event backwards, like somebody's going to run the event walking in reverse and they're going to get a glowing mask and they're going to think that that was the solution. I have been running all these events, actually, like you said, like a normal person running each event. I've walked it. I've slow walked it. I've walked it backwards. I've jetpacked the whole thing. There's a thing about correlation and causality and just because one thing happened and another thing happened doesn't mean that the second thing is in any way related to the first thing. Now it's time for some science. The wiki has some statistical probabilities for what mask you should get what percentage of the time. And strangely, it lists between the three rarities, common, uncommon, and rare, you have the greatest probability of getting an uncommon mask, which makes no sense. You should have the greatest probability of getting a common mask, which makes me think that common and uncommon are switched in the wiki, or maybe the uncommon used to be, I, I don't know. But regardless, you have a 5% chance of getting a rare mask. You have a 71.25% chance of getting an uncommon mask. And you have a 23.75% chance of getting a common mask. I've been running the event like a regular person every hour that I was able to run it, and I've done it 19 times over the past seven days, and you've been AFKing the whole time pretty much, right? Pretty much. I've played it uh, a couple of times, or I don't know, whatever, five or six times. I've actually run the event in person when I was, you know, when it happened while I was actually playing. But for the most part, I've been running it AFK, and I have gone through it 92 times at this point. Dear God, 90, 92? And what's interesting about Noodles 19 times and my 92 times is that based on the number of masks that we've received from each category, we're almost identical to the statistical probability from the wiki. The wiki says you'll get a rare mask 5% of the time. I've gotten it 4.35 and she's gotten it 5.26. So right around you know, a reasonable margin of error around 5%. 
Uncommon, we should be getting 71 and a quarter percent of the time. I've gotten it 71.75 and she's gotten it 73.68%. So again, within a reasonable margin of error. And then common masks, 23.75 from the wiki. I've gotten a common mask 23.91% and she's gotten it 21.05. It appears not to matter whether you run it AFK or whether you run it in person, the percentage probability is going to hold true across the board. Even though the common and uncommon titles make no sense, it appears that their percentage numbers are actually accurate and heartbreaking. <laughs> Those are very hard numbers to work with to actually get anything worthwhile, I think. It is. It is. Uh, so statistics are not perfect, but in a world of statistical perfection, there's some interesting data. For example, you should get a rare mask one out of every 20 runs. You should get a common mask one out of every four runs. And you should get an uncommon mask the rest of the time. But if you wanted to get all masks of a particular type, in order to get every single one of the 15 rare masks, you'd need to run the event 300 times. But if you wanted an uncommon mask, you should be able to get all of them after just 13 times or 21 times for common masks. But the probability of getting any particular mask is inversely proportional to the overall number of masks, which means that as the pool of masks grows, you have a smaller and smaller chance of getting a specific mask at any particular event. Right now, you have a 0.33% chance of getting a rare mask. Pick any one of them and you have a 0.33% chance of getting that mask at any particular event. You have a 7.92% chance of getting a particular uncommon mask and a 4.75% of getting a specific common mask. Next year, Bethesda is going to add more masks to the pool and those numbers are going to continue to get smaller and smaller. I think the mask pool is something that people don't consider. Fastnacht started in 2019 and with the exception of 2020 when it ran two times, it's been running once a year in February since 2019. However, it's not that we get all new masks every year, it's just that they add new masks every year. So most of us who've been playing for more than a year already have some masks from previous events. So we are after the brand new ones. Like, I want the glowing Scourge Beast Queen mask. That's a really cool one. But because the pool is growing and I keep getting Jesters and Toothy Man and Witch masks, which I already have a ton of, the chances of getting that glowing Scorch Beast Queen mask are very far in the distance for me. Or you just have to run the event 3,000 times. Basically, if you run the event 4,500 times, you should get every single one of the 15 masks. But unfortunately, there's only, I think, 396 Fosnox in the two week period. Oh. 336. There's only 336 Fosnox in the two week period. <laughs> Sorry. Whether you run the event actively or passively, there's really no way to get around these probabilities other than to just run it as many times as you possibly can. Even if you do that, your chances are still pretty low. So it may just be better to not care and just enjoy what you get from the game. Very true, very true. Everything comes down to math and numbers. Math is numbers. I'm oh, sorry, am I a dick? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for all your comments. You make it a lot more fun. Enjoy the rest of your Fasnacht. We are Gamer Aviator. And until next time, Vault Dwellers, remember the truth is out there. Maybe. We're not sure.